mosaic model of membrane. In the previous talk, we have discussed about biomembrane, its structure and component. Today, we'll be discussing briefly on fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane. The fluid mosaic model explains various observations regarding the structure of functional cell membrane. The fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane was first proposed by Samer Jonathan Singer and Grat L. Nicholson in 1972 to explain the structure of the plasma membrane. The structure was based on thermodynamic principles of organization of membrane lipids and properties of available evidence of asymmetry and lateral mobility within the membranes. After over 40 years, the basic model of the cell membrane remains relevant for describing the basic structure of a variety of intracellular and cellular membranes of plants and animal cells and lower forms of life. The fluid mosaic model describes the structure of a plasma membrane as a mosaic of components including phospholipids, cholesterol, proteins and carbohydrates that gives membrane a fluid character. The portion of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrate in the plasma membrane vary with cell type. For example, myelin contains 18% protein and 76% lipid. The mitochondrial inner membrane contains 76% protein and 24% lipid. The formation of specialized membrane dominance and the presence of tightly packed integral membrane protein complexes due to the membrane associated fences, fence food, and other structure are very important in describing membrane dynamics and architecture. This membrane, along with membrane-associated psychoskeleton and extracellular structure, maintain the long, non-random mosaic microorganization of membrane, while smaller membranes such as lipid rafts and protein complexes are important in maintaining specialized membrane structures that are cooperative dynamic flux in crowded membrane plane. In this talk, we are going to discuss a fluid mosaic model of membrane structure, its purposes that is applicable to most biological membranes, such as the plasma lemma and the intracellular cell organelles, such as mitochondria and chloroplasts. These membranes are henceforth referred to as functional membrane. Let's see one by one about the various model of membrane structure. First, we'll see the lamellar model. In 1895, Overton suggested that cell membrane contains lipids. This conclusion was based on the fact that fat solvent dissolves the membrane easily and fat soluble substances pass easily through the cell membrane. Some workers like Hober, in the year 1910 and Fricke in the year 1925 also found that low electrical conductivity in the cell membranes which indicate the presence of lipid bilayer. Gotter and Grendel in the year 1925 were the first to suggest a possible structure of the cell membrane based on their studies of cell membrane of erythrocytes from the red blood cell. So it was thought that the membrane consisted of double layer of lipid molecules. This is the lipid bilayer model. Here, the polar hydrophilic groups of molecules being situated on the outside of the membrane and the hydrophobic ends standing in right angle to the surface are oriented inwardly. 
Uh, next, we'll see the protein lipid protein hypothesis or the sandwich model as devised by Danieli and Debson. The first important hypothesis of the structure of biological membrane was proposed by Hugh Debson and James Danieli in the year 1935. According to bimolecular model of Danieli and Debson, the plasma membrane consists of two layers of phospholipid molecules which are arranged in such a way that hydrophilic heads of the phospholipid molecules pass outside and the hydrophobic nonpolar chains are associated in the inner region of the leaflet. The hypothesis also suggests that the polar ends of lipid molecules are associated with monolayer of globular protein. The plasma membrane would thus consist of a double layer of phospholipid molecules sandwiched between two essentially continuous layer of protein. Next, we'll see the unit membrane model. The hypothesis led by Danieli and Debson was modified and refined particularly by J. David Robertson in the year 1959 into the unit membrane hypothesis. Robertson work on the plasma membrane of red blood cells on the electron microscope and gap the concept of unit membranes, which means that, number one, all membranes have similar structure of three layers with an electron transparent phospholipid bilayer being sandwiched between two electron dense layer of protein. Two, all biomembranes are either made of a unit membrane or a multiple of unit membrane. The unit membrane of Robertson is called trilaminar model. It has a thickness of about 75 angstrom, with a central layer of 35 angstrom thick and two peripheral protein layer of 20 angstrom each. According to Robertson, each membrane contains more than three layers or thicker than 75 angstrom. It must be a multiple unit membrane. In unit membrane model, the protein layers are asymmetrical. On the outer surface, it is mucoprotein, while on the inner surface, it is non-mucoprotein. Later, other investigators proposes globular or subunit model in which membrane were views as consisting seeds of recurring lipoprotein subunit of diameter 4 to 9 nanometer resembling the subunit structure of some oligomeric protein or the codes of some viruses. However, globular models have failed to account satisfactory for many properties of membrane. Next, we'll come into the fluid mosaic model of plasma membrane, the widely accepted one. The most satisfactory model of membrane structure to that appears to be the fluid mosaic model postulated by Samuel Jonathan Singer and Grat L. Nicholson in the year 1972. This is the fluid model mosaic of membrane structure. These are the phospholipids. These are the integral protein. These are the peripheral protein. And these are the sugar. According to this model, the cell membranes have been visualized as mosaics of lipids and protein. This model postulated that the phospholipids of membrane are arranged in a bilayer in which the peripheral and the integral proteins are embedded to form a fluid liquid crystalline matrix or core. The model is often likened to an iceberg that is the membrane protein floating 
in a sea of predominantly phospholipid molecules. The Flint mosaic model postulates that membrane proteins are globular to account for their high content of alpha helix. Some of the proteins are partially embedded in the membrane, penetrating into the lipid phase from both sides and others completely span membrane. To what extent a given globular protein penetrates into the lipid phase would be determined by the amino acid sequence of the protein and the location on its surface of the nonpolar amino acid R groups. Thus, the various membrane protein would form a mosaic-like structure in the otherwise fluid phospholipid by layer. This mosaic is not fixed or static since the proteins are free to diffuse laterally in two dimensions, at least in some membrane. In their model, Sanger and Nicolson consider the lipoprotein association to be hydrophobic and the fluidity of the membrane results due to hydrophobic interaction. It should be noted that phospholipids and intrinsic proteins are amphiphatic molecules, that is, both hydrophilic and hydrophobic occur within the same molecules. The integral or instruction proteins account for 70% of the total membrane protein and passes into lipid bilayer of different depths. Some of them run throughout the lipid bilayer. They are usually called tunnel proteins which individually or in groups from channels for the passage of water and water-soluble substances. Because of rapid movement of lipids and protein molecules, the fluid mosaic model is different from the static picture of the membrane in Danieli and Davidson model. The protein provides a structural and functional specificity to the membrane. The protein of the membrane are concerned with the enzymatic activities, transport of molecules, receptor for hormones, recognition centers, and antigen. The lipid bilayer acts as the permeability barrier. Some of the lipid at the outer surface is complex with carbohydrate to form glycolipids and glycocalyx. The fluid mosaic model accounts satisfactory for many features and properties of biological membrane. First, it provides for membrane with widely different protein content. Second, it provides for the varying thickness of different types of membrane. Third, it can account for the asymmetry of natural membranes since it permits proteins of different types to be arranged on the surface of the lipid by layer. Fourth, it accounts for the electrical properties and permeability of membrane. And last, it also accounts for the observation that some protein components of cell membranes move in plane of the membrane at a rather high rate. Now, let's see what makes a cell membrane fluid. The fluid mosaic model and the cell membrane is how scientists describe what the cell's membranes looks and function like because it is made up of a bunch of different molecules that are distributed across a membrane. If you were to look at a cell membrane using a microscope, you would see pattern of different types of molecules put together known as mosaic. These molecules are constantly moving in two dimensions in a fluid fashion, which is quite similar to iceberg floating in the ocean. The movement of the mosaic of molecules make it possible to form a completely impenetrable barrier. There are three main factors that influence the cell fluidity. First is the temperature. When temperature is cold, they will stick together. And when it's hot, they will move apart. Next is the cholesterol. Cholesterol molecules are randomly distributed across the phospholipid bilayer, helping the bilayer stay 
fleet in different environment conditions. The cholesterols hold the phospholipids together so that they don't separate too far, letting unwanted substances in or compact too tightly, restricting movement across the membrane. Next is the saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are chains of carbon that have single bond. Single bond. This makes them straight and easy to pack tightly. Unsaturated fats are chains of carbon atoms that have double bond. Double bond create twists in the chains making them not as easy to pack tightly. This play a role in membrane fluidity because the twists increase the speeds in between the phospholipids, making them harder to freeze at low temperature. The fluidity of lipid is supported by many indirect studies based on X-ray diffraction, Differential thermal analysis and electron resonance study techniques. These techniques indicate that the lipid bilayer has many dynamic properties, which are as follows. First, the rapid motion involving flexion within each lipid molecules is possible. Second, rapid lateral diffusion is possible. Third, slow motion of lipid molecules from one side of the bilayer to the other is also possible. Fourth, the lipid molecules might rotate about their axis. The fluid mosaic model of cell membrane is now widely accepted to apply to cell membrane of all types, regardless of their varying characteristics and differences in lipids protein ratio. In fact, this model can account for the molecular organization and ultrastructure in terms of their chemical composition. Let's come to the conclusion. From the present study, we came to the conclusion that the fluid mosaic model of membrane structure postulated by Singer and Nicholson in 1972 is the most widely accepted and satisfactory one. Though, different hypotheses has been postulated by different scientists regarding the structure of a cell membrane, they failed to give satisfactory results with regards to various properties of a cell membrane. The fluid mosaic model of cell membrane is now widely accepted to apply to membrane of all types, regardless of their varying characteristics and differences in lipid protein ratio. In fact, this model can account for the molecular organization and ultrastructure in terms of their chemical composition. <laughs>